Welcome to our weekly University of Rio Grande, the Ohio State University Collaboration Podcast Show. We are here at the University of Rio Grande's TV studios. Not only are we doing live internet radio through Blog Talk Radio, but also live on the Jackson Educational Access Channel. Our podcasts are archived, and our TV broadcasts are placed on YouTube for viewing and listening again. Our mission is simple, to promote the University of Rio Grande and its diverse educational programs, to promote the Ohio State University South Centers and its many business technology programs, and finally promote Southern Ohio, a great place to live, learn, and enjoy life to the fullest. Co-hosts are myself, Jason Winters, Director of the Center for Small Business Entrepreneurship, and Mike Thompson, Instructional Design and Media Services Director, both with the University of Rio Grande. Patrick Dingle, Business Development Specialist, and Kimberly Rouse, Program Assistant, uh, both with The Ohio State University South Centers. And also joining us is Nate Walzer. Nate is an MBA student here at the University of Rio Grande and working on the podcast shows as one of his projects for his MBA. And today we have a very special guest. Patrick, why don't you introduce him? Uh, it's my pleasure. Uh, yeah, yeah, Nate and I were uh, talking with our uh, featured guests, and he, he comes with a lot of experience, well-rounded businessman, uh, a lot of experience in the teaching profession, a lot of experience in in the, the banking world, real estate, and I, I'm pleased that he's, he's involved. He's going to talk a couple things about uh, how the University of Rio Grande uh, students get a heads up with the business. Uh, like to hear more about the Wall Street Wall Street training program, uh, educational experiential uh, program that Roger took some students on, and then of course the uh, business simulation. That is something uh, that University of Rio Grande needs to be really proud of because of the the rankings. Uh, so Nate, uh, boy. It, uh, it's our pleasure to introduce Roger Watson. He's the assistant uh, professor here at the University of Rio Grande. Roger, great having you here. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Uh, tell us something about yourself. <coughs> Where do you start? <laughs> Where do you start? Well, in a nutshell, I have about 34 years experience of teaching on the college level. I love teaching, always have, even when I was in the corporate world, was teaching on my lunch hour and every night. That's how much I loved it. Uh, I have about uh, 11 years experience in corporate banking, uh, have about 25 years experience in small business ownership and consulting, so I try to bring a lot of the real world practical experience into the teaching field. I'm born and raised in southeastern Ohio and love it here. Uh, and how long have you been with the University of Rio Grande? I've been with the University of Rio Grande now for 11 years. 11 years? Yes. Um, since, since I'm the oldest in the group, et cetera, uh, and then I, I'm not sure who is the, the next oldest, you don't look like you have had 35 years of teaching. Wow. You well, keep your, your age well. Actually, I figured if I have 34 years of teaching plus 11 in the corporate world, that gives me uh, 45 and another 25 in small business. I'm actually at 70. So that makes me <laughs> 123 years old. I think that's great. I, and... Uh, tell us some of the courses that you are involved with here at the University of Rio Grande. Well, here at the University of Rio Grande, I've, I've taught a variety of courses over the years. I've taught uh, the capstone course, strategic management, which capstone capstone course. Cap, what, what is uh, that? The capstone course is the course that students, business students, have to take before they graduate. It allows them to put together the various areas of business that they have studied during their four years here at Rio Grande, including management, economics, finance, marketing, uh, and they take some of those areas and then they put it together in a course that requires them to not only understand more about the overall strategic process of managing a company, but also they learn to analyze strategic plans of other companies and develop one in a company that they run in a competition. We'll talk about it in just a few moments. Okay. <coughs> Well, why wait for a few moments? Why don't you tell us a little bit about the uh, the simulation game? Sure, sure. And how well the university has performed. Well, yes. The students, as part of the capstone course, are not only required to analyze case studies, 
of strategic plans of companies, but they're required to participate in an online simulation competition. What that entails is they divide into groups of two, assuming we have an even number in the class. Occasionally one will work by themselves if, if, if something unique works out. And they have to run an international manufacturing footwear company with uh, plants and markets in North America, China, Latin America, and Europe, Africa. They have to make almost uh, 300 decisions each week. Each week in their company represents a year in their company. So each week in class represents a year. And they run this company for 10 years or 10 weeks. And they make about 300 decisions a week in terms of pricing, in terms of marketing, in terms of management. They have to take into consideration tariffs, uh, rate exchanges, they have to take into consideration the variety of the scope of products, the quality of the products, and whether they want to outsource those uh, manufacturing uh, jobs to one of, their, uh, one of their factories overseas or here in the United States, for example. Uh, they compete against each other. So, and it's not a win-lose. They could all do very well, but they're required to try to take sales from other classmates. And all of these decisions are made online, processed online, and then we recover, uh, then we cover the reports and review them each week. So they're able to see how they're doing according to their overall master strategic plan. And we always have a, somebody who comes out ahead uh, of the rest of the class. And it's always a lively competition. Uh, they get into it. They get very excited. They have a lot of competitive juices flowing through them. They do not want to lose. And so the reports each week are for all of them to see. Now, the other interesting feature of it is that the publishing company, McGraw-Hill, will publish once a week the top 100 performing companies throughout the world. In the past year, over 43,000 students and over 400 colleges and 35 countries participated. So not only do students at Rio Grande compete against each other, they're ranked according to students throughout the world. We've had the good fortune every semester since McGraw-Hill has been publishing the top 100 rankings, we've had students in the top 100 from Rio Grande every semester. Uh, we now continue to see students perform uh, at a top-notch level. Prior to this year, we had students reach as high as 11th in the world. But this spring, we had one student, Tom Saunders, who was ranked one week seventh in the world. And in the fall semester, Brittany Brown and Stephanie Trainer were ranked fourth in the world. So that's exciting because students not only see how they do in relationship to each other, but they see how they do in relationship to students worldwide. And I think that's an important aspect for Rio students to see we can get the quality of education at the University of Rio Grande that will allow us to compete in the business world, and we can keep up with students across the globe. And I think that's exciting for the college. I think it's exciting for the students. And as I say, it certainly generates some very lively competition. Well, who are some of the uh, competing universities? <clears throat> Well, it, it would be easier to tell you who's not on it because, as I say, I, wanna, I want to, it seems to me the number 491 colleges comes to mind. If it is a major college in the world, it's there. I went through the list uh, one time with students, and if you go to every state in the union, the major state college in every state, including one or two Ivy Leagues schools, are on that list, and a number of international schools. So it's exciting to see. It, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a very respectable list. And you're saying that uh, several, several of our students were ranked fourth out of how many students again? Well, in, in the past year, there were 40, over 43,000 students who participated in it. Now, that doesn't mean they're all participating this week. Some could have been last semester. So you, you've got to figure at any point in time, there are probably around 20,000 plus that are participating. And then among those students, they are divided into groups of two. But then the rankings each week are in specific categories. They could be return on assets. They could be return on investment. They could be on stock price. But the, but the category that, that I like to look at and measure is the overall ranking. When you put your company up against other companies worldwide, how do you stack up? Now, again, you emphasize they, they compete against each other in class. 
but they're ranked against everybody else in the world. So whatever whatever your score is in the class at the University of Rio Grande is then put up against scores worldwide with other students. So it's it's exciting and it's uh, it, it's encouraging not only to see what the university is doing, but for students to see how they're faring. Is when they when the students do this, is this just a one semester program or do they continue it when they're done? Is there things that they can go on and do after this, like uh, awards or stuff that goes on, scholarships, maybe job opportunities that come from this? Good, good question. This is part of the capstone course in the School of Business, as I mentioned. It is a one semester course. So in that semester, they we, it takes us about, it has a steep learning curve to learn how to play the game. So it takes us between three and four weeks just to learn. You have to, to hit the ground it. running just to you learn have it. To, it is very, very time consuming. They The computer system keeps a log of how long each player is logged on so I can see how much they're, they're uh, actually participating. And the student who won the competition this semester was logged on nearly 90 hours. So it gives you an idea of the time, uh, effort, and the commitment. Now, when it is done, I, 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 have, to, <laughs> I have to be honest. There are some <laughs> students that do not want to see it again. <laughs> uh, it, it is, especially if you're not one of the groups doing well. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've had students who have said, we wish we could do it again knowing what we know now. I think it would be a great opportunity for us to consider something like this in the MBA program, where those who have taken it one time would then be able to take it again, knowing what we know now. Now, before we start the competition, we do a practice round. I call that a scrimmage mm -hmm. game. And it allows them to make decisions, make mistakes, see how the, the, the process works. Uh, it's a very detailed manual. They have help screens. But again, it's a, it's a little overwhelming and daunting when they first log in. When they gain the familiarity and they see the reports each week, it allows them to see things. And this is the overall purpose of the game, to see a company from a macro perspective, to be able to see how the decisions you make in one area interrelate and affect another area, mm -hmm. and to see that you don't work in a vacuum. You can make a decision and have a competitor just totally, totally blow you out of the water with the decision they made. So you're not you're not just acting, you're having to react and think strategically. I was wondering, do you are you prompted for decisions or are these voluntary decisions? <coughs> the categories are, are there. You you are required to make decisions in certain categories. So when they go online and they're looking at their particular screen for their company, they are told these are decisions you have to make. For example, it, it, gets, it gets very technical, even to the detail of on your shoes, on the soles of your athletic footwear, do you want standard materials or uh, higher quality materials? On the laces, do you want standard or higher quality? Yeah, what's uh, your market? I yeah. That's what you're going for. And do you want to offer 100 different types of shoes or 500 different types of shoes? Do you want to just manufacture shoes with your name on them? Or do you want to manufacture, manufacture shoes for Walmart or Pennies with their name on them, private label? Do you want to have just selling through stores like Foot Locker? Uh, or do you want to have some superstores like Nike Town would be? Do you want to have online sales? And how much do you want to emphasize these in those four geographic markets? So it's, it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's a little overwhelming until they get into it. And after they get that learning curve completed, it gets into some lively competition, particularly as we get down to the last week or two when they're trying to see who's going to win. Now, as far as winning and ranking, mm -hmm. does your grade depend on that? Yes and no. Uh, it, uh, there are those who think, well, the, the whole grade is based upon a, on the game, and that's not the case. It is 40% of your grade, so it's significant. So, I mean, if I go bankrupt in my company, <coughs> does that mean I got a bad grade? You start uh, again if you go bankrupt. Don't you? Well, <laughs> <laughs> you can apply for a bailout, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I've often said that depends on your if if if, if you're uh, if, if you're a Republican, it's a stimulus. If yeah. you're a Democrat, it's a bailout, and if you're Ron Paul, it's a conspiracy. <laughs> so it really, de it really depends on what your politics are, what they call it. It is it, it it prompts you if your score gets too low, you're required to complete a three-year strategic plan. So it literally guides you through the process, but it also bases your ability to borrow on your risk factor. 
your ability to sell stock based upon how the market perceives you. So all of those factors come into play. And so, it, it, you know, it is 40% of the, of the competition, but it is not a zero-sum game. It doesn't have to be one person gets an A, so therefore one person gets F. The way the well, I wasn't sure if, you, if, you're, if your company tanked, yeah. then I got a D or something. But yeah. you can learn as much or more sure. by messing up. And it that's a safe on, place to yeah, do it. It depends on why you messed up. Yeah. If you messed up because you just didn't put forth the time, yeah. then that's a different story. If you messed up because you don't understand it, my question would be, how did you get to the capstone course? So in between sessions, uh, I, I'm always shoring up their knowledge of financial information. I One of the jobs of the capstone course is to see the areas that they're not as proficient in as they should be as a so, group as a group so we'll fill those gaps in i spend a lot of time in financial statement analysis in understanding ratios understanding industry averages understanding the whole concept of financing debt equity versus uh, i mean debt financing versus equity financing uh, the concept of, of 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 exchange rates tariffs those types of things so I'm mentoring them as they go, but students will be the first to tell you, I will not, I'll not cover for them. Mm -hmm. it, it, they're a senior. Their expectations, and I, uh, there has, in, in the 11 years that I've taught the course, I've never had a company go bankrupt. We don't, we're, we're not in the business of going bankrupt. Mm -hmm. So it can happen, and in the prior reports, there used to be a bankruptcy report that would come out each week that would tell you how close you are. Now they simply call it credit default risk. And they let you know. And the companies, and, and frankly, they're seeing, it's in a fishbowl, they're seeing how they compete versus everybody else. Students who are seniors have a certain competitive drive. They're close to graduation. And if they see they're far down, they're not going to let that happen. It's, yeah, it's, they can taste a job coming maybe. They could taste that. Yeah, that's, that's very true. That's so this point. could mean something to me. Sure, <laughs> sure. Do, do you find that uh, with the capstone uh, coursework, it, when they when students do go for interviews, uh, do you find that uh, international companies uh, have a healthy respect for for the the coursework that you're doing? Well, you know, each individual company is going to be different. But I think it gives students a more well-rounded exposure because they're able to talk more intelligently on global uh, economics, global business. And I think that's part of what we're teaching overall, the overall globalization of the business world. And not only that, but talk in terms of the realities of, of trying to raise money, whether it's through debt financing or equity financing. In, in the competition, they can sell stock but they often buy stock back. You get a lot of treasury stock where they're trying to uh, take some of the retained earnings and uh, work with the, the outstanding equity, which then in turn will affect the ratios because the, the game is weighted and scored not on how big you are, but it's ranked, it, it's more of a, a weighted algorithm uh, of weighted scores based upon uh, categories such as return on investment, stock price, credit rating, things such as that. So they know up front how the game is ranked. So therefore, they have to be mindful of you cannot game the game. It is it 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 mirrors uh, the running of an actual business fairly closely. The only thing you don't have to worry about is the hurricane that comes in and wipes out your company. This isn't like Sim City that uh, <laughs> something's going to happen to your company. So. Pat, I'm going to give Roger just a second to catch his breath. I know he's been talking a, an awful lot here. Uh, the, the capstone uh, course, it, it does give our students the opportunity to show their their business acumen, uh, what they've not learned over the last uh, four years here at the university. Uh, one other thing that I'm just going to touch on here for a couple minutes is how we give them the opportunity for an experiential learning opportunity. Uh, all of our business students that come out of the Emerson E. Evans School of Business are required to do uh, an internship in their field. Uh, that usually takes place uh, late in their junior year or into their senior year. 
usually in the spring, we just completed the internship. I had an awful lot of accounting majors. They love to jump into that internship during the spring when they can go out to uh, local accounting offices and help prepare taxes. Uh, it, it's just been a wonderful learning experience. Uh, it's something that uh, not all colleges do require. Uh, it is something that is in our curriculum and we require, and it does give our students that experiential learning opportunity to get out there and see what lies ahead within the next year of their life. So uh, with that said, we also have another uh, learning opportunity, and that's a trip to New York City. And that's something that Roger has uh, graciously taken upon himself to organize, uh, and he has touched base with Wall Street uh, and several other people in New York City to, to give our students a wonderful experience and to allow them to see what lies outside of southeastern Ohio. So. Roger, if I've given you a chance to catch your breath, I'm going to let you talk about New York City now. Well, the New York trip is very exciting. I've taken students there 10 times, and I still get just as excited as the first time. And, and to, to speak from a broader scale for, for a moment to lead into that, <clears throat> this, is, this is part of the capstone course, the simulation game, the trip to New York, internships. These are all part of what we are trying to do in the School of Business at Rio Grande to give students, as you said for your heading today, a heads up. Uh, I have this theory that if a college just graduates students and never prepares or helps them for the job market or for the quote real world, then all we're doing, I call it producing academic Moseses. We're just putting them in the basket and sending them down the river and thinking we did our job. It's unacceptable. The job market is very difficult. An article last week in USA Today indicated that half of all college graduates now under the age of 25 are either unemployed or underemployed. Now, tuition costs are increasing, and it is our job, it's our responsibility to not only prepare students, but to give them the responsibility and awareness so that when they leave here, they have a resume that is effective, that is going to help get them a job. They have interviewing skills. They have been outside of Southeastern Ohio. Uh, you and I are from here, we chose to stay here, and that has been a good thing for us. And if young people from this area wanna stay here, that's a great natural resource and an asset we want. But we want them to stay here because they're aware there's a bigger world and that they've made that decision. So this is something that traces its roots back about six years, where I originally thought of bringing somebody from Wall Street to the University of Rio Grande. Realized the logistics of that may be difficult, so I said, well, if I can't get Wall Street to Rio, why not take Rio to Wall Street? So as I say, we've done about 10 trips. We usually take between seven to 10 students. It's a 36-hour whirlwind trip. Uh, I tell them that you're going to walk about seven to eight miles on concrete. Uh, you're not going to have one moment to breathe. I don't have to worry about students getting in trouble because they're so <laughs> tired, they're begging me to go back to the hotel. Uh, we start out at the airport in Columbus about 5 a.m. on a Friday, and by Saturday, by about 7 p.m., we're back in Columbus. And we fly to Columbus, immediately get in a cab, go straight to the New York Stock Exchange, this past March 30th and 31st when we went, we even had our luggage at the New York Stock Exchange. They store it for us. I've developed some contacts over the years there, and I've spent two weeks there on the floor of the Stock Exchange this summer, so I've been able to develop some good relationships that we <clears throat> call upon. They then invited us on the floor of the exchange for the opening bell. We were able to watch CNBC broadcasting from the floor. And of course, all the students are waving and texting all of their friends. And then afterwards, uh, unlike the other groups that were there that day that were then asked to leave because of the relationship we've developed, they allowed us to stay on the floor for another hour and a half, meandering among the traders and the broker dealers and the designated market makers, chit-chatting with them and they were telling us exactly what they do, uh, their backgrounds in working there. The, the, the exchange has changed so much over the years. They were able to tell us about their experiences on 9-11, being a trader on the floor. Uh, a couple of them even asked us, do you want to go to lunch with us? And we had some other, uh, other schedules, but um, 
and appointments. But that's the kind of interaction that the students are having. We then went over to the 9-11 uh, memorial. Uh, that was very, very poignant. And to watch the new, at uh, this week, the new uh, tower uh, reached a height higher than the Empire State Building. Right. And it's going to rise to a, a height of 1,776 feet, thus the Freedom Tower, 1776. <clears throat> Students then did a power, what I call a power walking tour of Manhattan. They got to ride the subway. They got to go down to the Bowl in lower Manhattan, Battery Park. Uh, we then subwayed up to uh, Central Park, came down Fifth Avenue. Uh, they were trying on rings at Tiffany's. They danced on the piano at F.A.O. Schwartz that was in the movie Big. Uh, St. Patrick's Cathedral, Trump Plaza. Uh, they were able to go down to Rockefeller Plaza, the skating rink. Uh, the, then they went over to Times Square, came down through Times Square. Uh, we then go back to the hotel, they get ready for dinner, and then we went to the, the West Village, a little Italian restaurant where we had a vice president with Goldman Sachs, uh, we had a, a ratings analyst for Moody's Rating Service, and the owner of a proprietary trading firm on Wall Street joined us for lunch. And I always have those folks sit amongst the students. So everybody's chit-chatting with each other, talking about resumes, what's your average day like, how did you get here, what advice could you give me. And then afterwards, and I do this with each trip, it's my gift to the students, uh, I surprise them with a stretch limousine. And we do a late night tour of Manhattan uh, in this stretch Escalade that's about three blocks long. And it takes us back up to the skating rink of Rockefeller Plaza, then over to Times Square. So they're going down through Times Square in, in the stretch limo. They get out a little bit because half the fun for the students is to get in and out of the limousine. Uh, then we went down to Little Italy, had some gelato. The students, most of them, never had gelato. Uh, and, and so we then went up to the rooftop of one of the uh, buildings in Manhattan so they could get a view all over Manhattan. Uh, and and b by about midnight, they are they are exhausted. Uh, so we don't worry about them wanting to do anything else after that. The next morning, bright and early, we're at the Today Show. They're in the audience. They're all waving at, at, at parents and friends. We then go to a little diner on Broadway where the waiters and waitresses are all Broadway hopefuls, and they sing while they're waiting on you. So that's, that's kind of fun for them to do that. Uh, the students then have a couple hours to do some sightseeing, souvenir shopping in Midtown Manhattan and Times Square. We then go down to Goldman Sachs into their new international headquarters down across from um, Ground Zero. And we meet with uh, a representative of Goldman Sachs, go into the trading floor. Students get to sit at the trading desk and have their pictures taken as if they're doing trades. And we have a presentation uh, by the representative of Goldman Sachs of what is investment banking, what is the difference between investment banking, commercial banking. Uh, so the students have had a variety of experiences. And it's, it's, for many of them, they call it the trip of a lifetime. Uh, they get to actually experience so many different areas of New York. For many of them, they've never been to New York. Several of them have never flown. So it's quite, a, quite an exciting uh, trip. Okay, Hi. we've got about a minute and a half to wrap up or say anything else. R Roger, in, in about a, a half a minute, tell us what you do with the rest of your, uh, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it is fantastic that you are so involved with the, the students and getting those experiential learning. You are a big proponent of matching experience, realistic experience with education. A and bottom of my heart, I wanna, wanna thank you for providing those opportunities because very, very important for our, our students to get that heads up. Well, you are correct in that if all we're going to do is give them a regurgitation of what's in a textbook, they can do that online. But if they're going to spend their money, they deserve excellence. They deserve excellence not only in what's being taught, but in the way it's being taught and in the relevance. And I firmly believe that our job as faculty members does not end when they graduate. I think we need to be available to them, and I regularly have students who have graduated who will get back in touch with me. Hey, can you look at my resume? Hey, I need some insight. I've got this job offer versus this one. What do you think? Or I don't have any job. What do you think? Do you think I ought to go to graduate schools? Uh, we're mentors, yes. and I think that's, a, that's a, the broader scope of what we're doing. Well, that, that is fantastic. Roger, thank you for uh, uh, sharing some of your uh, 
uh, past successes and, and, and hope to have you back onto the show. Thank you. Um, ne next week, uh, we have Le Lisa Pfeiffer. Lisa Pfeiffer is with the Pike County Community Action Organization. She's going to be talking about loans. Uh, uh, on behalf of everyone, I'm Patrick. I'm Nate. Jason. And Mike, thanks for watching. <laughs>